Manning. Um, my name is Stephanie Carlisle, and this is Sammy Gay, John Paula Holton, Ola Smialik, Justin Gilmore, and Derek Kravat. We are graduate students in the Regional Planning Department, um, but we also partnered with um, the graduate students in the Landscape Architect Department, um, which include Ambika Chatta, Melody Tapia, Shul Lee, and Daniel Fontaine, and we helped um, together we did a lot of our development of this proposal. So it's my pleasure to introduce our project titled Networks of Opportunity, a Citywide Vision for Pedestrian and Bicycle Pathways in Sydney, <coughs> Massachusetts. And I'll pass it off to my colleagues now. Thank you, Stephanie. So I hope you brought your helmets because we are going to take you on a ride. <laughs> um, so Chickapedia right here is this bright red city in the middle of Hamden County of Western Massachusetts. <coughs> For the sake of our presentation today, we're going to go over in kind of two sections. We're going to go over the context first. That includes the problem, goal, objectives, and kind of some background and history of Chicopee. And then we're going to transition into our recommendations for uh, the city. So we'll start with my problem, which is due to its pattern of development, Chicopee cannot be easily or safely traversed without a vehicle. As we see in this lovely image here, we have a biker right off of the downtown area on Front Street. Um, traveling down a one-way car lane. So we know that there are bikers in Chicopee and there is not supportive infrastructure to allow them to travel around the city. The problem is also supported by a recent PBPC, which is the Pioneer Planning, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, um, study based off of high crash sites in the valley. Chicopee has 12, as you see down Memorial Drive and other um, streets in the city, 12 high crash sites. Um, placing it only third after Holyoke and Chicopee. So from that, our goal is to create a vision plan for the city, um, which increases the connectivity of social and environmental assets, both locally and regionally, regardless of age, race, gender, <coughs> identity, or ability. And within that goal, we have a few objectives, which are to increase the number of users of pedestrian and bicycle paths in Chicopee, um, ensuring that these paths um, provide safe to the city schools to connect the city's natural, historical, and cultural resources while making regional connections to the neighboring cities. And I will pass it on to my colleague, John Paul. Thank you, Sammy. So our client directive included four different components. The first was to engage the public so we could get a feel for the local community needs as they regard to transportation. Um, and then also the client asked us to delineate boundaries for geographic sectors within the city based on either topography or other built environmental features um, or demographics. Um, next was to identify destinations within sectors which are major hubs of activity that serve multiple purposes. And then lastly to connect um, these destinations and these sectors by creating paths for pedestrians and bicycles. To better inform our client directives and our recommendations, we wanted to look at uh, Chicopee as a whole. So we conducted several site visits to learn about it in a more personal way. And we wanted to share a few pictures of, of our experiences. So here is downtown Chicopee. And you can see there is beautiful architecture. And uh, there also is a variety of retail and service establishments within the downtown area. The historical character is also very evident within the city. It has a lot of mill sites, like <coughs> this one across from the Chicopee Canal Riverwalk, that have been transformed into apartments that offer a glimpse into the historic past and industrial past of the city. And then we also learned a little bit about its residential character, and we noticed that Chicopee is predominantly single-family housing. And all of these allowed us to gain further context. And for that, I will pass it off to Justin. Thank you, Ola. So I'm just going to share uh, briefly two pieces of demographic information that were pertinent to our project. Uh, the first piece is uh, median household income in Chicopee. So as you can see from 1980 <laughs> to 2000, Chicopee's median household income was slowly increasing. Uh, and as of the most recent data available, it's uh, been declining. Um, and so Chicopee is sort of in the middle range um, it, with respect to median household income uh, in the context of the entire county. Um, and so the reason I'm just sort of showing this is, you know, we want to provide the residents of Chicopee with alternative um, ways of getting themselves about the city. As we know, you know, owning a car and uh, paying for gas can be um, sort of, you know, costly. So to sort of lessen that burden, um, you know, we want to make these paths as conducive to people uh, fulfilling their daily um, objectives, getting around the city, doing what they need to do. Um, 
Um, the next piece of information that I'm going to share is the age distribution within Chicopee and how that's changed over time. So um, here it begins in 1980 and we have 2020 and 2030 projections. So the key point to this graph is to show that Chicopee has an aging population. We can see that it's going to uh, increase substantially uh, over the next couple of decades. So um, in, the, in the construction of these pedestrian networks, we want to ensure that they are conducive to elderly lifestyles while also attractive to younger people and bringing more younger people into the city. Um, so with that, I will pass it off to Derek. Thanks, Justin. So just to provide you with one more piece of context for our project, um, if you're a student and you live in Chicopee, if you live within one mile of an elementary school, one and a half mile of a middle school, or two miles from a high school, you're actually ineligible for bus service through the public school system. That's a city policy. And so this map shows, once you overlay those zones onto the different schools in the city, um, you know, it really covers almost the whole city. So many students in Chicopee um, actually do not have bus service, and this is very problematic, um, especially for those whose families um, do not own a motor vehicle. Um, and so we really wanted to make our project geared towards safer paths um, for walking routes for the city's students. And this particularly informed our public engagement. Um, so our first approach for public engagement, uh, which John Paul mentioned was a part of our client directive, was to distribute a survey to the parents of K-12 students living in Chicopee. This was the Chicopee Student Walker Safety Survey. It asked, um, it asked respondents to um, identify why they would not or not, why they would allow or not allow their children to walk to school, as well as identify problem areas. We got 106 respondents to our survey over our five week study period, um, and the Chicopee Police Department helped us to distribute it through their Facebook page. And one of our key findings from this survey was that 80% of our 106 respondents noted that the speed of traffic um, was, was a factor that uh, <coughs> um, contributed to their decision to allow or not allow their children to walk to school. Um, and you can see that this ranked a lot higher than distance. Um, as well as things like time or the convenience of driving. So what this says to us is that if there is a way for the city to do some traffic calming, to reduce the speed of traffic and maybe make sidewalks more accessible, um, for the parents who are using those factors as, um, as part of their decision to allow or not allow their child to walk to school as opposed to distance, we might see an uptick in the amount of students who walk. So we thought that was a very interesting finding. Um, our second approach for public engagement was to conduct in-person and phone interviews with stakeholders um, within the education community and city employees. So throughout our study, we did seven, um, seven interviews with uh, school administration officials and city employees. Um, our interview consisted of five open-ended questions related to problem areas um, for walkers, as well as um, being suggestions for improvement. And we found again, sort of aligning with our survey findings, that the speed of traffic and the amount of traffic near schools was a major concern. So again, the need for traffic calming there. Um, and then we identified a few problem areas, um, particularly related to the speed of traffic, Burnett Road, Front Street, Pendleton Ave, Memorial Drive, Grattan Street, Granby Road, and Broadway Street. And the first three there are highlighted because we're going to highlight them for some of our recommendations later in the presentation. So I just wanted to preview there and now I will pass it on to Stephanie. So now we'll present our citywide vision. So just to give you a, a little bit of context of the city overall, um, these are some of the features that we highlighted as they pertain to our projects such as the schools, parks, some of the major pathways and also some other um, key uh, destination points. And then as directed to address our client, um, our client's request, we <coughs> divided the city into three different sectors, the Northwest, Northeast, and South sector. These were, um, we determined the, the way to divide the city this way um, based on the built environment. Um, the Mass Pike runs east to west and um, Memorial Drive, which runs north to south, um, kind of already divide the city and act as barriers. So instead of making these kind of the spines of the city, making them more edges, um, and then each one of these sectors also houses um, a destination point as identified by our clients, such as the Bellamy Middle School, Bowie Memorial, Chicopee Memorial State Park, and the Front Street Corridor. And so now you can see our, with our vision in totality. So all of the green represents the, um, the pathway. The um, darker green signifies both on-road and off-road paths. 
light green shows the path networks that currently have sidewalks. Um, and so you can see that. Oh, and also this was based on, so the reason we made this plan was to um, connect um, schools, parks, places of employment, as well as historical sites throughout the city. And also the criteria for creating this path network um, was based largely on the presence of sidewalks. If there was existing sidewalks, it would be easier to implement um, these newer paths, and make them safer, it was kind of a first wave approach. And also the topography of the city, it does vary, so we wanted to avoid um, steep slopes in the creation <coughs> of these pathways. And so now we'll, we'll kind of dive in and focus in more on the different sectors. So the first sector we'll talk about, I'll talk about is the northeast sector of Chicopee. It has um, two of our uh, destination points, um, the, Bo the Bowen Memorial and the Chicopee State Park. And um, you can see in this image, again, the path network with the green and the, um, the path with the sidewalks. Now we'll go even further into focus. So we'll focus mostly on um, the Chicopee State Park and specifically um, our new, we have priority paths that we've created. Um, so the green in this, the solid green represents proposed paths or existing paths. Dotted green signifies proposed paths, but we're suggesting or recommending that the city focus on Sheridan Street, which is located here, and Burnett Road, which is located here. Um, so the first rendering that we have shows Burnett Road before, and currently the only way to access this state park is formally is through vehicle um, or by car. Um, so we propose um, adding an additional sidewalk that caters to um, pedestrians and bicyclists, as well as creating a bike path along um, Burnett Road on both sides, and adding you know bike signage to let people know that this is available to them and also incorporating um, some native plantings and street trees would make it a more enjoyable experience. And this is Sheridan Street before. So this one is more significant because this would be a proposal for an additional entrance into the state park. So this would be solely for um, bikers or walkers. And so after, um, we would add bike paths again on both sides of the street, um, a vegetated median with the sidewalks to separate um, walkers and bikers from the street, making it safer and I decided to let people know that this is available to them. And, and now I'll pass it off to one. So the northwest sector of Chicopee is bound by the Mass Pike in the south, the Connecticut River in the west, and Memorial Drive on the east. Within the sector, there are several schools and uh, parks that we want to provide access to, but we wanted to especially focus our the dark dotted green paths around improving access to our destination point, which is Bellevue Middle School, that turns into a field uh, after school hours, as well as the Connecticut River, which is a major natural resource that our client has uh, shown interest in improving accessibility to. So within our focus as Bellamy Middle School, we wanted to adequately improve that access. And just to give a little bit of context of the area, it is situated, the school is situated in a residential area with some open space and un undeveloped land. Our priority path will include the utility corridor that is located adjacent to the school as well as Pendleton Avenue that runs right in front of the school and provides direct access. That's where all the buses will go. So Pendleton Avenue currently has a speed limit of about 35 miles per hour. However, as can be seen by our public engagement, there was a concern of Oof. safety, and um, it's a one, one way in each direction. There's a fairly narrow sidewalk. The entrance to Bellamy is located right around here by the, after the guardrail, and you can see the utility corridors above. So what we recommend is first improving the streetscape. We want to add bike lanes into both sides of the road to improve bikeability. We also want to designate a footpath of, for that sidewalk and that's a priority as well. Additionally, because uh, sidewalks are narrow and speed is a factor, we want to influence or add, excuse me, raised up crosswalks as traffic calming mechanisms. And then you can see here, we would also like to designate a footpath as well as potentially a bike path under the utility corridors, which are currently privately owned. However, there have been cities in the US that have uh, come to agreements and negotiations for a shared use bike path. Uh, we would also include some native flowers and meditation. 
to improve the visual landscape. I will now pass on to John Paul. Thank you all. So last day, this is the south sector of Chippewa. Um, it is on the north by Route 9 near the Massachusetts Turnpike and on the west by the Connecticut River. And the sector is rife with historical, cultural, and natural resources. Um, right here is the downtown um, center. There's Al Elms Pollard over here. Um, this is the French <coughs> Corridor with the public library, which leads into um, the downtown that also has City Hall in it. This is the historic West End here. And also, as you can see, the two rivers within Chippewa converge in this sector, providing ample opportunity for um, accessible natural resources and recreational spaces. <coughs> so um, we're going to focus on the Front Street Corridor because it is a major connected corridor to that connects all of these resources. Um, and this is the proposed plan. So as you can see here, there are already bikers who do bike on Front Street Corridor. On the Front Street Corridor, however, it is not safe at all whatsoever for bikers. Um, and there is no supportive infrastructure for bikers and hardly any for pedestrians as well. So we propose to have two bike lanes on either side of the Front Street Corridor here with um, paths that connect it to the Chippewa River Canal River Walk. Um, and this also aligns with actually the city's plans as the city has already proposed to have this river walk created here. And the only 0.8 miles of existing bike lane within Chicopee exists right over here. So, um, and so this is what Front Street looks like now. We visited the site many times and walked along this corridor and have experienced firsthand that the traffic is very fast and it's really hard to cross the street even at the limited crosswalks that the street has. Um, and so we propose instead to um, add a lot of trees and shrubbery which have a traffic calming effect. Um, like I said, to include bike lanes on either side of the street and also to add in some signage and some wayfinding tools so that people know where they are within the greater context of the sector. Pass it on to Jeff. So, in addition to these more geographic specific recommendations in our final project for our client, we are including policy, design, and programming recommendations. So our policy recommendations, um, this kind of gets into funding for some of these projects, as well as feasibility. Uh, we are recommending that they uh, work with the Mass Department of Transportation on Complete Streets program. This first requires a policy that has to be passed by <coughs> the city's city council. So we are recommending that and proposing implementation timeline. Um, the Safe Routes to School program, this is a federal program that's also um, funneled through the state at the Mass Department of Transportation. Um, and as part of our project, we did connect the city with a coordinator from the Safe Routes to School program. So we really hope to kickstart that process and have them work with the city schools um, to get some funding for some of those proposals that will do traffic calming in school zones. And finally, to take what we've produced here and more formally create um, a bike and pedestrian plan for the city, as well as to, as to incorporate some um, bicycle and pedestrian friendly components into their future planning documents. Um, so I just wanted to cover those briefly to let you know that we are working on those and we're going to take a deeper dive into some of our programming and design recommendations. And for our first one, I'll pass it out to Justin. Thanks, Derek. Um, so we're recommending that the City of Chicopee um, adopt the Walk Your City uh, Toolkit, uh, which is a toolkit that allows community um, individuals, community organizations to um, you know, explore how to, uh, through really creative ways, um, improve and enhance the walkability of um, their city by posting signage that identifies points of interest um, and also indicates you know, how long it would take to walk there or how long it would take to bike there. Um, so this is a really great way to just sort of cultivate um, this interest within Chicopee uh, to allow people to understand what is available to them in their uh, city, what they can go check out. Um, so we can you know, um, identify historical places, cultural places like the Polish Center, um, of Discovery and Learning, which is a museum that we've heard is, uh, you know, cultural gem in Chicopee, um, and, you know, or identify, you know, how long it would take to get to the park. Um, and so, as I said, it's meant to increase uh, walkability and enhance this experience by uh, making people aware of what's available to them. Um, so, in uh, looking through different precedent studies, there have been a number of examples in the United States um, of cities that have adopted this, this toolkit. Um, one is uh, in West Virginia, uh, Mount Hope. Um, they did a really cool thing where they recorded, video recorded the process of them uh, putting up these signs 
and then they put that, um, that video on the city website and they were able to elicit um, public feedback uh, on that process and this just sort of allows for a dialogue between the city and residents um, on what uh, points of interest people want to highlight, uh, what signs work, what signs don't, and it allows people to explore sort of permanence of um, putting signs that can then be fixed um, and always indicate you know, a key point of interest that people seem to like to frequent. Um, and there are also examples um, in Northampton and Springfield that have similar signs up like this, so we know it's doable and we recommend that you be, um, should do that. All right, now I'll pass it off to Ola. So we also wanted to incorporate some fun design components for the city of Chicopee. And we thought Glow in the Dark Bike Pass is a perfect example of how this could be done. Our case study is Lijvak Barminski Poland, Polish, um, and <laughs> so, which is, has made recent headlines because of its um, success as a bike lane and its unique uh, design elements. So it's made up of synthetic fluorescent materials called phosphors, and they stay lit for about eight to 10 hours as they are solar charged. Uh, the lane is currently six feet wide and 330 feet long, and costs about $31,000 to put into place, but it has been something the people of Leechwag have really enjoyed. So outcomes that the town of Leechwag, as well as Pacer Planning, has started to identify with the potential of using glow in the right bike paths is that it improves bikeability. It makes it fun. It makes people want to get out and enjoy the road. It also enhances the visual landscape. It provides something different and moves away from the typical green bike lane we tend to see. It also builds place attachment. People are proud of if something unique comes to their city. They want to share it with others. They want to connect with it. It also increases security at night by enhancing visibility. Um, this could be ideal for roads that have little or no street lights. And it also creates the potential for cost-efficient alternatives. We don't have to use synthetic materials, though that's, that's a great idea. Uh, you don't also have to apply it the whole width and length of a bike path. Uh, there's also glow-in-the-dark paint that has been uh, used and designed. So that's something to think about. And it's definitely something unique. So now I'll pass it on to John Hall for our final recommendation. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, final recommendation is um, as a member of the Pioneer Valley, Chicopee has this unique opportunity to join these other towns, Northampton, Amherst, Holyoke, South Hadley, and Springfield in this Pioneer Valley um, Planning Commission Regional Bike Share. Um, and so basically how this works is that um, there needs to be, basically the local businesses are engaged to sponsor this program, and so they have to provide $12,000 a year um, and get three businesses to do this to start. Um, and then once they do that and the program is implemented um, based on how successful it is, they could get potential funding from the state in the future. Um, and so we think this is a great way to not only increase um, local connectivity, but also regional connectivity to these other places here. And um, it also stimulates local businesses internally as well. So I think that's a great recommendation for Shippee. So just before we conclude, we are including in our final report to the City of Chicopee phased implementation strategies. So we've just thrown out a lot of recommendations, um, and they're all um, you know, pretty ambitious. And so we are including specific implementation strategies for each one of those. Without going into too much depth uh, for every single recommendation, these are some kind of general takeaways that we just want to share with you um, that kind of apply to all of our recommendations. So at the zero to six month mark, um, this is kind of a phase for the city of Chicopee to build social capital, to meet with community leaders and other stakeholders, maybe do some more outreach to understand what the community needs and what they would support. Um, and kind of again working on that bike culture in Chicopee. So there are programs like Walk Your City and others um, that allow them to um, kind of realize some outcomes on a more short term temporary basis. And then within the one to two year mark, maybe securing some pilot funding. Um, again, maybe perhaps have, as they go after the Complete Streets program or Safe Routes to School program, um, as they start to construct some of their um, infrastructure that we have proposed. And then finally, at the three to five year mark, to evaluate existing programs and make some of that infrastructure more permanent and obtain more long-term implementation funding. Um, so we have this for each recommendation, and these are just some general um, strategies that apply to all of them. Um, so in conclusion, um, 
during our project, we really found through our public engagement and just through others we met in Chicopee that there really is a lot of support and a lot of excitement around more bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, making the city more walkable, more bikeable, more pedestrian friendly. Um, people really, really want that. Um, and that's something that we felt during our time, both in Chicopee and, and talking with people from Chicopee. Um, we've identified potential opportunities uh, for the city to consider, um, and we hope that we've built a strong foundation for them to build upon the future plans, and we're really excited to see how some of this unfolds, and we're excited to hear your comments, questions, and feedback. Thank you so much. Um, if you could direct them to me, and then I will pass them on along to our team accordingly. Um, that would be great. Okay. I, I have more comments than questions. Um, okay. but, but, but I, uh, initially, I had mixed feelings about how quickly you sort of cycled through your presentation, uh, but you, it worked well. You're, you had good flow and good choreography, so uh, congratulations for handling a potentially tricky um, presentation style in a, in a fairly effective way. Um, just a couple of things related to the maps that you created and the visual coding. Um, on one map, you, in the legend, indicated um, uh, in red um, dotted lines priority paths. Um, but then on that map, I didn't see any of the priority paths, paths on the map. And then in the later one, you showed the priority paths with red dotted lines, but it was not in the legend. So. Um, just getting some consistency about how you uh, communicate that information in your maps. And then similarly, this is just a minor issue, but you indicate that the major highways as dotted lines, and typically the, the symbolism is dotted lines indicate proposed or provisional. So, so it, it was a little confusing to use a dotted line to describe something that is an existing uh, condition. Um, the, uh, the visualizations are, are great and very helpful. Um, probably need to have some sort of discussion of um, what's what's feasible within the existing rights of way because you were talking about these are really narrow roads and then you had this very generous you know automobiles and bike paths and sidewalks and vegetation you know and, and the question is whether that's even really feasible within the existing right of way uh, so sections help with that um, but um, and then finally um, you guys did just a fantastic job of the presentation, very comprehensive, covering lots of information, uh, presenting in a very clear, well-organized sort of way. Um, uh, but one key aspect of uh, promoting biking is to, to, um, to talk about bike infrastructure. Like, uh, are there bike racks in town? So what, what exists, what needs to be part of that to really accommodate an increase in, in bicycle use? So, so thinking about the infrastructure elements, in some cases, maybe bike shelters and, and some critical uh, sorts of areas related to inclement weather. And then think about events programming that uh, cities and towns like Northampton and Amherst have bike week, or they have various events where they um, promote cycling and so on, and to really kind of think about uh, that sort of opportunity. And then, um, and then finally, um, I'm very happy that you mentioned the Pioneer Valley Bike Share. Um, and one way that you could potentially help them is to identify where would be sort of prime locations for bike share within Chicopee, and then who might some of the potential uh, business uh, sponsors be for that kind of. So that's something where you could potentially give them some concrete information that would help them make their decision. So anyway, but fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. <coughs> Yeah, I had a question. Uh, one of your uh, stated goals, I think one of the first slides. Oh, wait, so you get there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, can you talk about sort of how your plans are going to be implemented, I guess, regardless, and you know, be accessible to people regardless of like age, race, uh, gender identity, and ability. I think that's really important, and I'm really glad you included that. But I wish you touched upon that a little bit more, and it 
you know, for instance, I don't understand at all what the conditions are that maybe exclude these groups initially and how your plans help create that inclusion. And, you know, kind of without delving into that, it almost feels 